Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Derazzle, the show where we take award-winning worst films and try to fix them, uh, except sometimes. Uh, I'm your host, Joe Nealis. Without me tonight is also host Jack Culbertson, uh, which means, yes, you are getting a deleted scenes episode today. Uh, we were not anticipating releasing one of these this early in the season. Uh, we were hoping to save these for like an actual break, but we kind of need one right now uh, due to uh, just life kind of hitting both of us a little bit hard right now, and in particular Jack and Belinda, who sadly had a, uh unexpected loss of one of their cats. So uh, our thoughts are with them. This episode is going to cover deleted scenes through the beginning of Season 2 through the sixth episode, so from the Emoji Movie to Superman Lives Part 1. Uh, so if you have not checked those episodes out, uh, do so. They're quite good. Uh, I'm also quite partial to the Mommy Dearest episode that falls within that range, has, qu has been the runaway favorite of this particular season so far, so please check those episodes out. Uh, also, pet plug for the Amory Wars episode, because I'm very fond of it, and I would like to see it get more lessons. So uh, I'm not going to jump back in throughout any other point of this episode, so thank you if you've uh, been listening to us at, at all. Uh, so if you are, you are partially responsible for getting us to 5,000 overall plays just uh, just over this weekend. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, that is a huge milestone, and we're really proud of it. I wish Jack was here to uh, help express that, uh, but I'm sure we'll do so when we come back next week to begin covering 2017's The Mummy. Like we said, extending spooky season into November. <laughs> In honor of spooky season, I'll be interspersing some spooky noises in between the various clips throughout this episode, so that will be your signal that it'll be switching to something fresh. And uh, if you have not done so already, please rate and review the show everywhere you possibly can uh, to help us get up in search rankings and help other people get our show into their ear holes. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who has been doing that, uh, in particular to Jenny Thomas, who has been re reviewing us uh, religiously on Good Pods. So thank you, Jenny, and thank you to everyone else who's been doing that. If you want to follow us on social media, you can reach us on Twitter at Derazzled Pod, on Instagram at Derazzled underscore podcast, on Facebook at Derazzled Podcast, and on TikTok at Derazzled Podcast. Uh, you can also email us at derazzledpodcast at gmail.com if you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see us cover. Uh, or if you have requests for any merch that you'd like to see pop up in our Redbubble store, uh, you can look us up there at, at uh, Derazzled Merch. Uh, and I think that about does it. So please uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy these deleted scenes. And we'll be back next week to Razzle Dazzle ya. <laughs> So I, I don't have a, a specific opening. Okay. I just have like a bunch of thoughts in my head that I need to get out <laughs> <laughs> to make room for what we're about to do today. Fair, fair uh, enough. So, uh, so uh, uh, do we want to cut the? I mean, uh, I know we don't want no, to, but and uh, uh, hmm. Good thing it doesn't feel like 104 degrees outside. What are you talking about? We don't live on the surface of the sun or anything. <laughs> Uh, pretty much all social media. Find uh, just search derazzled. I'm gonna do that again. I lost complete. I had my train of thought like left on one rail. <laughs> Great, cool, cool, cool. Uh, uh, why don't you tell uh, the uh, audience where they can find us? Alex goes to send his crush a text, selecting Jean the meh, who panics, destroying the mechanism used to select emojis. It reminds us that Patrick Stewart is in this movie, which I assume he only did so his BFF Ian McKellen, McKellen, McKellen. Um, so McKellen, my my face is swollen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, his best friend Ian McCrubbin, uh, <laughs> wouldn't feel so bad about being in cats. But let, let's let's take it let's take it clean. No, <laughs> <laughs> I have no. I thought was. Do you have any commas when said in that sentence? Uh, <laughs> Alex, <laughs> I'm trying really hard to focus on what you're saying, but all I can think of is like big yellow cocks and vaginas. Like just emojis of these, like, like, uh, cut, cut, cut this, cut the shit. <laughs> I, I hate that we're having this conversation. Yeah, it's needless and stupid. Um, have you heard of a game called Misfortune? Misfortune. Yeah. Um, it's like a story-based game. I don't know if I have. 
It's on sale. I'm gonna try it after after we're done. It's like very very dark humor. Uh, I just started playing um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shredder's Revenge. Yeah. How is it? It's real good. It it captures everything that you loved about those the arcade beat 'em ups. Is it uh, where, where are you playing it? On my Xbox. I wonder if I can purchase it through like this PlayStation Store. Oh, I guarantee you can. Yeah. Uh, Matt was asking if this movie did well in theaters. It did. Um, That's unfortunately it. It did really, really well. It did do really well. Which we'll. we'll I think we'll. I think we'll talk about well, that yeah, a little we'll bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also cringed at the previews and wanted nothing to do with it. But here we are. <laughs> Fuck. Well, I mean, we we made this dark pack. We to... <laughs> we did this to ourselves. Yep. While I was watching Mad Gods last night, I was like, I don't know if you know the story behind it, but like Phil Tippett has been working on this movie on and off for 30 years. Yeah. Um, and there's I, there's like one other film that I've heard of a person ob- obsessing over working on it for that long. Um, and I forget the original name of it, but it, it, it came Konarowski's out. Dune. <laughs> if only. <laughs> um, it's the... <sighs> fuck me. It's an animated film... About uh, a, a dude who sews shit. A lot of the elements were were borrowed for Aladdin. Um, there was this animator; he drew everything by hand. It was amazing. It was like very Escher esque. Interesting. Um, okay. But because he worked on it for so long, and he had so many different animators working on it, they were they'd be like, "Love you. Got to go make some money. Got to pay some bills." So they would go over to Disney to work yeah. on Aladdin, and a lot of the stuff that made that movie kind of unique was taken for Aladdin. Um, Anyway, the point being that you have these dedicated filmmakers that want to tell their story so badly they spend over a quarter of their life working on it. Uh, And I'm, you know, we've, uh, not that American Curse is done, but like our portion is more or less done. Your portion is done. Oh, my portion's been done, yeah. Mine's like mostly done. Um, and while that movie did kind of crush, that process did kind of crush a little bit of my desire to make another movie. Like, I cannot see living my life without making another movie at some point. Sure. And uh, I'm watching Mad Gods and thinking, like, okay, so if my stretch my timeline of making a movie from two weeks <laughs> to 30 <laughs> years, how would I do it? I think that that's key to our key to the process. That, that probably would help. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then I read about this fucking movie, and it fills me with rage. rage. Absolute unbridled, seething rage. Like, I don't even get mad when they make a movie about, like, Morbius or whatever. The, sure. Uh, uh, a, um, an intellectual property, because it, most of the time, they make money on it. Not, not with Morbius. Not but. with Morbius, but, like, most of the time. <laughs> it's because no one, even Spider-Man fans, were like, that one? That one? Really? There's a lot of villains. Have you heard about what they're doing next? Craven, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Craven, but he's he's not a hunter. He's like an animal protector. He's being played by (laughs) Kick-Ass. Darren Taylor Johnson. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Why? It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Look at (laughs) that Sony! <laughs> the fuck? Oh. He did nothing against him as an actor. No, I like him as an actor. But And I and I <laughs> I'd heard he was cast and I was like, okay, I mean it's gonna be fucking weird, but like it, it'll be interesting. Craven the, the hunter. hunter It's in his name It's in his fucking name <laughs> Do Craven's last hunt cast the dude who played Negan. Oh man, Jeffrey Dean Morgan would be great in yes, that. Yes, Jeffrey Dean Nor- Morgan. Give Tom Holland all of the Zendayas and <laughs> Zendaya is a currency, I guess. Uh, apparently. Um, a national treasure, one would say. Might say. There you go. Uh, and make one of the like four Spider-Man arcs that anybody knows of. <laughs> you, 
Amy Pascal, if this is you. <laughs> have you learned nothing? Holy she's, shit. She's, she's too busy counting all of her Adam Sandler money. <laughs> it's just. Do you remember when North Korea hacked Sony's emails? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in, in in um retaliation for uh what the, was the Seth Rogen film for the the interview? Yes, the yeah. interview because mm-hmm. I nobody watched it. it it's stupid. I actually, um, actually did watch that. I did? Was yeah. that yeah. it was okay. Yeah. But they like kidnapped Kim Jong Un. Was that, was that um something that made him look not great? Yeah. Uh, so it was not hard. <laughs> not no. Uh, but real life, North Korea was like, well, if you're going to do that, we're going to release all these emails that you don't look great in. And then they're like, well, we're not going to not release this movie because we don't negotiate with terrorists. I don't know. Yeah, that sure. Probably the- somebody, you know, somebody in Sony's head office said that exact line. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. They released all the they emails. They released all the emails. And I'm like, you motherfuckers are children. You are children. You're children. You are mean, bully children. I- idiot children. Sony, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I don't. I don't know. Why I'm surprised because, like, I've I've now read the documents of like t- the inside of two <laughs> big film companies. One being Sony. <laughs> The other being Disney, yeah, because uh, uh, of the novel. I think it's Disney War. Disney War, yeah, which is like really interesting. I'm not gonna say it's fantastic. It's a, it's a little dry because you're reading about like corporate politics, of course, yeah. Uh, but because it's a because it's a, a global behemoth like Disney, yeah. there's gonna be some interesting yeah. fucking shit. Oh, there's there. a ton of interesting shit, yeah. in it, especially for because uh, it covers the <laughs> the movies we grew up on. Yeah, um, Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Lion King, The Great Mouse Detective, The Great Mouse Detective, uh, and. Oh, the most surprising part of both of those things is that these people are children. I'm so mad. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, enjoy uh, <laughs> American Curse 2. Um, even cursier. Even cursier. <laughs> curses in space. <laughs> I uh, guess I should go peace so we can start the rest uh, of the... Uh, so uh, at the beginning of that gigantic tangent that we went through, Matt, <laughs> j- Matt chimed in and asked, was that a joke about Craven? Yeah. Oh, they're actually doing that, huh? Yeah. Yes, Matt, they really are. Look it up. <laughs> that's a that's a thing that's going to happen. They learned fucking nothing from no. Morbius, my man. <laughs> I do want to say it's the last of the Spider-Man. I spit all over myself. No, it's not. Oh, fuck. They're doing Madam Web, aren't they? That that there are plans for them to potentially do Madam Web. Yes, let's no. do the old woman who doesn't do anything but no, sit in a giant they al- spider. They web. also no, they've also cast uh, the rapper Bad Baby as that's a name that I just had to say aloud. Uh-huh. As um oh fuck, what obscure fucking Spider Man villain is he playing that I'd never heard of before? Bad mm. Baby, not Shocker because we already saw him. Ah, what's the like early score? Sp- spot. No, it's not Spot, but he's coming into play in the next Spider Verse movie. That makes sense for his character. Yeah. Um, I just searched "bad baby Spider Man" <laughs> and my my, and my search results huh? are real fucking weird. <laughs> they're like they're safe for work, but man, right. are they fucking weird? Bad baby Spider Man, huh? I don't think Spider Man got the the baby X Men treatment. But, I don't think I don't think so. But I could it's. I could be wrong. God, what obscure villain? Oh, my God. Like, I don't know Spider-Man as well as I do a lot of other heroes. Oh, Bad Bunny. The guy's name is Bad Bunny. Okay, okay. Oh, here we go. Bad Bunny Marvel movie. El Muerto. He's playing El Muerto. They're doing an El Muerto movie. Who? You don't even know who the fuck no. this is. No. Holy shit. Do they have a picture? Um, I'm pulling up a I'm pulling up a story. This is from well, oh, this is not helpful. Thanks. Hypebeast.com. Um Spidal Man. Okay, I hate inverse, but uh who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, you see, you see him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I just found a picture of him. He, uh, 
I don't fucking know. Apparently he's a luchador or some nonsense. Because oh, fucking god, I'm gonna go pee. Go pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to hear this segment in the deleted scenes episode. <laughs> Death. Death. Yeah. Oh my god. No one tell Amy Pascal about the clone saga. Please. Sorry, clone saga? In Spider Man? I'm not aware. Oh it's it was Is this the impetus for Spider Man turn off the dark? <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna say that. I'm just gonna <laughs> make that headcanon now. Sweet. Um, it, it was it was a run in like the '90s. The, it was like grim and gritty. Uh, basically, they said like Peter Parker was actually a clone of a previous Peter Peter Parker. Peter Parker. Um, <laughs> they got like a swoopy swapped uh, in like the '80s, and no no one caught on. Uh, and so Peter Parker retires so that the real Spider-Man can become Spider-Man. It was kind of a way of them trying to retire Spider-Man or Peter Parker because he'd like got married with MJ. He was just getting older. Yeah. They wanted to have a family. They're like, hey, he was never really the right one anyway. What about this guy over here? We named him Ben because of Uncle Ben. <laughs> sure. And now you like him because he wears a jean jacket. Um. And like like Spider Man in a Canadian tuxedo, yeah, <laughs> just all denim, all head denim. to toe denim. Not the eyes though; that would have been difficult uh, <laughs> to see through. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't do like a sheer see through right. denim for him to really <laughs> right. be able to see through. Oh my god, uh, I need I, to draw this. It actually was like vaguely popular to begin with, but then Marvel saw the money and they're like, "How can we stretch this on way longer than anybody has any desire to do?" Uh, yep. And it, it became, like, very hated. Uh, obviously, they kill off Ben, Ben Riley, and then bring back Peter Parker, because it's the fans. Uh, and because uh, fan culture is so toxic, it mm-hmm. has now entered the stage where it's nostalgic. So they've, they've like, redone the saga a couple of times. They've, like, touched back on it. Um, anyway. Amy, put it down. Put, put it down. So uh, it's it, great. In 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 the good place, he plays a. Um, he's supposed to be like a like a supernatural AI who is built by another supernatural AI. Uh-huh. So it takes a lot longer for him to like kind of figure out how shit works. So like one of the ongoing arcs is him like becoming slowly more human as he gets reset and and re and reincarnated. Uh-huh. And there there's just a great point where he's like eat, he's like sitting in a in a chair wearing a really fancy tux and and uh drinking a martini glass that's just full of olives uh and regaling everybody with the fact that he almost has a functioning human penis. It's a great show. Uh, I've watched the first couple of episodes. It didn't quite hook me. It's uh, give it a ch- give it another chance. Uh, it, like, it is both the smartest and one of the funniest shows that I've seen in ages. It's so good. Now I want a martini glass of just olives. Just olives. Yeah. <laughs> like anytime I order a martini, I'm like, it's just filthy. Dirty, just scrape just, it off the floor. I want this to be as dirty as possible. Hold the martini. Yeah, pretty much. I'm like, just give me the olive juice. <laughs> Uh, you just want this jar of olives? No, it needs to be like in a glass. eyedropper of vodka. <laughs> uh, so, don't use straws; they're bad for the ocean. <laughs> get a good reusable metal straw. Get a good That's, reusable metal yeah. straw. I know it can feel a little weird on the teeth, but it's it's worth it's worth it. The, <laughs> it's worth the sacrifice. <laughs> um, if you're gonna, you know. Please follow us on social media at <laughs> this Jack plays peekaboo with the stream. Uh, you brought this upon yourself. You could have clicked away at any time, but you are still here. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Act one break. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I know you just need to like. No, the next part's going to be a bit dense. <laughs> so okay. I, fi- I figured this would be a. a, a We've got about twenty, a little more than twenty minutes of recording right now, so I figured this would be a good time to just yeah. take uh, to take a breather, uh, and yeah, fi- and uh, <laughs> prepare for that. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, 
Uh, I feel like I ro- walked into the, like the wrong classroom <laughs> the first day of the semester. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, right. English for immigrants is two o two, right? No, no break. No, Aaron. What do you mean no breaks for us? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I was going to play the music, but I think that actually might get us taken down. So I won't do that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, since we're actually live. We're actually live. Yeah. We, we don't got them rights. Mm, sure doesn't. No. Um, I'm I'm cool to keep going. So it's. Uh, I mean, Aaron said we don't get a break. So that is, uh, I think I think we're just going to jump right back great. in. Always listen to Aaron. Yes. All of their albums. Did Sorry, you I just that? love Matt's comment. <laughs> there, Thank you, Matt. That's there's very love sweet. out there for everyone. There's love out there for everybody. <laughs> the multi uh, multiverse version of you is a woman with a blonde with blonde hair. Amazing. <laughs> so tell me about this, Mister and Mrs. Coheed in Cambria. So I think I think the playwright's Norman Mailer. I could be wrong. I could. I'm probably wrong. It doesn't matter. Wow. Um, I already graduated. You can't take that back. Uh, <laughs> what is Aaron? Yeah, I'm just saying here. Oh, yeah. I was reading Aaron's comment a little bit there. Uh, not going to lie. I've only been kind of vaguely paying attention in general. But with that said, even if I was paying more attention, I still feel like I would have no idea what the fuck is going on with anything Joe said. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. I So I, I'll I'll be completely honest. I've been listening to this band for almost 20 years now, and a lot of this stuff I've only actually understood in the past, like, three days. <laughs> Fuck. What? Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller. God damn, damn we're going to have to correct that. I, or I, I, could just, I could just remove that part where you try to mention the uh, playwright's name. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I even knew it was like I mean it's not Norman Miller it's from like the same time period but probably yeah I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised there like as I was writing that like that synopsis of that album like the thing that I struggled with the most is how the fuck do I tell this sequentially uh-huh cuz I did jump around a little bit to try and limit the number of like planet changes cuz a lot a lot of that stuff partic- like especially once you once um Claudio fucks off like when when you get into the second half of the story, there's a lot more jumping back and forth between like what's happening with Coheed and Cambria, what's happening with Claudio, what's happening with Wilhelm Ryan, what's happening with Mariah, what's happening with all these people, all of these different places on these different ships on these different planets. It's way too fucking much. You know why I got fucked up with Arthur Miller and Norman Miller? They both had romantic relationships with Marilyn Monroe. That would do it. Okay. Written by Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> I would love some more city water. Aaron, I wrote the script for this and my brain hurts. <laughs> I, trust me, I get it. Yeah, this is pretty far from my music taste. Yeah, I mean, I, I figured that would be the case. I thought some of their stuff might be a little bit more accessible for you, just because, like, there is, a, especially once you get past that first album, yeah. like, they... Like, cause like the first album's still like, oh yeah, we are in this like weird post hardcore scene and yeah. we're touring and we actively tour with a bunch of punk bands and like they still tour with a bunch of punk bands, but like album two on, it starts getting more and more prog rocky. Yeah. I would, I definitely, once we got to the second album, I, uh, especially like having it on in the background, I didn't mind as much. The first one, I'm like, this is high school. I'm back in high school. Yeah, I'm the hundred percent the lame kid in the back of the car while we're driving <laughs> around. I'm just like, this is some good music, guys. Can we play some Zeppelin? <laughs> yeah, because like they they really start adapting a lot more of like uh like they 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 pull in a lot of Rush, a lot of Zeppelin, a lot of they pull in yeah. all kinds of shit from uh from like the '60s and '70s to like help develop their sound especially as they as they start becoming much more sure. accomplished musicians because my god the musicianship just gets better and better and better and better remind me to send you a tiktok i found of a dude playing some like slipknot solo yes please send me that with one arm oh my god yes yeah. please send yeah. me that holy shit uh aaron to answer your question it came out three days ago uh and i've listened to it like four times the, the new new one the newest Cody oh. album yeah uh I, I'll talk a little bit more about my feelings about the album, about that album, because like what's going on with that story mm-hmm. is 
excuse me, is relevant to everything else, apparently. Okay, so it's, You know, because the story needed to be more convoluted. <laughs> Just... Right. Lore. Lore for days. I, I got a little bit of, like, a Tolkien vibe. Just in, like, <laughs> the amount of lore involved. So, uh, the original title of the story wasn't The Amory Wars. It was mm-hmm. The Bag Online Adventures. And I always felt like a goofy Tolkienian vibe from that uh-huh. name. Yeah. So, yeah, like you're definitely picking up on a thread that's there. Um, although the... If Tolkien, George Lucas, and Grant Morrison all had all contributed to a spawn... <sighs> Alan Moore, Grant Morrison, and Tolkien. Well, I said George Lucas, but... Jesus. Huh? <laughs> that's right. The, the personalities of Grant Morrison and Alan Moore versus George Lucas... I don't think he would ever open his mouth. Well, you know, like maybe we could have some more drawers. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I can get your thoughts on what I should have done with Jar Jar. <laughs> Got real so, guys. Uh, no, no more from you, Alan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the seven sided dildo was too much. <laughs> Look, this story already features a fucking demonic ten speed. Like I'm like a set like a, a, I'm so a confused. That sounds more like a Stephen King. Yeah, a, t- a touch. Like yeah. if if I knew nothing else, and you're just like, oh, it's a story about a demonic ten speed. Like, oh yeah, what Stephen King's short story is that? Uh, <laughs> it really, yeah, it really is kind of Stephen King. Um, yeah, that he, that's just a hallucination that plagues the that plagues God basically. <laughs> I don't know what is happening. Hold on. I, there, there, are, there are images. Hold on. Um, what did the bike ever do to him? Uh, it's trying. It's it's what I've I, again. I still need to find the new comics for this so I can yeah, yeah. really like get it down. But there's a good there's a good cover to show you ten speed. Oh, that's a pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah. It's an upsetting it, bike. Shit's intense. Yeah. Just, uh. What's the bike with the big wheeling wheel in the front? Penny farthing? Yeah. That's not, that's, that's not a penny farthing. That's his no. granddad. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Behold my goofy spawn. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, uh so, yeah. So <clears throat> the, um. Yeah. 10 speed is, is largely a hallucination trying to get the writer to, um, finish the story and thus ease his own pain. And the way he, the the way he sees to do that is to kill off the representations of his ex in the story mm-hmm. and, and, and push Claudio to his, to his inevitable fate of destroying everything. Right. Yeah. Basically writer put, or project writer project pain into character, <laughs> make sad hurt. Mm, it's first time that's ever happened. Yeah, no one's ever done it before. It's an incredible, incredibly progressive new process. <laughs> I just take it out of my wife. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just do a lot of drugs. <laughs> We're going back to the fifties now, right? That's what's, what's happening here. <laughs> going back to the twenties. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, this has nothing to do with anything we're doing in this episode, <laughs> but because I was watching that doc on uh, Joan Crawford. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. F. Fitz, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Oh, good. I was hoping you were going to go to yeah, him. Was uh, described Joan Crawford as the like epitome of a flapper. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Because she has like different phases of her acting career. Right. And, like first, she actually started as a dancer in nightclubs. And then I became, did not know that. Yeah. Uh, she... Found like her first star role, starring roles in like basically flapper dance movies. Okay, uh, and he's like, "Yep, <laughs> drinking, hard, smoking, kind of <laughs> just me and Zelda getting fucked up with Joan <laughs> Crawford, <laughs> G- giggly, fucking weird dancer." Um, this is not what I got out of whatever happened, to Baby Jane. But uh, back, back to Coheed and Cambria. In here, and you tell it <laughs> it it no longer qualifies for chair insurance, and you want to break its to little s- three legged heart. To smear some cold cream all over my face <laughs> and scream at it a little bit. <laughs> uh, Lord, <laughs> see, I do I, you have any scouring powder? <laughs> I've got some comet. That's close yeah. enough. Great. <laughs> it's abrasive. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, we live. We live everywhere. Well, we're live everywhere. We're live on that. We're we live are, on that. And we are recording. God Fantastic. save us! We're on the internet again. <laughs> <laughs> Back on uh, our bullshit once more. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I, I now see the sudden problem with wearing a hat on a podcast. <laughs> you, you, just, like woodpecker pack right. the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was tilted. I hate hats. I hate that was it. That was, it. <laughs> that was the extent of that hat wearing ordeal. <laughs> I'm proud of you for trying, I Jack. I fucking hate baseball hats. <laughs> um, we need one of those nice, uh, like, beach hats. A bucket and, like, hat. A bucket. Is that what they're called? The yeah. Like, like the floppy boys? Yeah, the floppy oh, boys. Oh, well, okay. So there are, like, sun hats that are nice okay. and big brimmed. Mm, uh, not quite. A bucket hat's more like a fisherman hat. Like, yes. it's just kind of close. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. We need a fisherman's hat. Austin Archer has declared it bucket hat summer, so I think... It's true. I think it's necessary. Yeah. I don't know who that is, but I like them. <laughs> you, you actually unironically would probably like him. He's on the TikTok though, so yeah. All right, I'm on the TikTok. Oh, yeah, okay. I do the I do the TikToks. Uh, so, P- please back <sighs> away from your microphone, oh, Jack. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> Was I breathing? <laughs> Was I breathing too much? Into no, it? you were yelling. No, okay. Oh, into oh, right, it, right, right. it. Yeah. Um, this is completely, drinking. This is. This is 100% unrelated to anything, but we just Great. watched the movie. Uh, what the fuck was that called? You better watch out. <laughs> Uh, oh the God. the other day, um, don't watch it. Don't watch don't it. Don't do that what to is yourself. It? It's, a, it's 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 a Christmas horror film okay. called, where uh, basically like a like a rich fourteen year old brat is like actually a sociopathic like murdering son of a bitch. Nice. And uh, um, we have no idea if he's sociopathic. We, okay, we, we don't just actually, know that he uh, he okay, is I, the I, character embodiment of evil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I, I should those. apologize. But you know he he, he it's um. It's bad. It's really, it's really. When did it come out? Ish? Um, recent. Like, 2018, 16? Somewhere around there. Yeah, so what you're saying is if he had had a masturbation harness, none of this would have happened. Um, if only his parents had listened to Kellogg. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> fed him endless amounts of graham crackers and put him in a masturbation. All those teens would still be alive, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Kellogg was right. <laughs> Yeah, but he he fakes being a sleepwalker, and that's, oh, that's okay, like okay. part of how he gets away with shit. Is like his parents think that he sleepwalks, but he knows how to get and he ah. knows how to get around like all of their uh like their their ways to make sure he didn't get out in the middle of the night. I don't know why Christmas horror movies are so hard to do, but there's there's like only a small handful that are decent. This anyway. one was deeply un- upsetting. <laughs> Zero out of ten. Do not recommend. Yeah, don't watch that one. Noted. I shan't. Um. Anyway, harness. Kept him in bed because she was too yes. busy drinking. Gotcha. Um, so in 1982, at the 22nd annual Razzie Awards, that can't be true. Why would it be 21st? It was like the second year they did yeah, this. Yeah, no, it's the second annual Razzie Awards, <sighs> Jack. I Numbers are really hard. I <laughs> Just... Mommy Dearest was nominated for nine golden raspberries. <laughs> it won five. Maybe. I don't know how numbers work. <laughs> Do you want to take it one more time? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That that voice. Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, And most importantly, it was nominated for the portion of my script I accidentally deleted. So. Wow. I didn't I didn't even know that was a category. (laughs) It was a a portion of my script that uh, is uh, no longer. um, What? Well, congratulations, uh, Razzies uh, and. And Mommy Dearest on on that one. Oh, this very unique impression <laughs> uh, accomplishment. If I uh, go back to a previous version of my script, hang on, it'll probably still be there. It's not. Hang on. <laughs> oh boy. Um, Fuck. Oh, Jack. I was so excited to critique Mommy Dearest that I. Forgot to list the nominations. <clears throat> so I put on my glasses so it looks smarter. <laughs> Golden Raspberry Awards. It won Worst Picture, Worst Actress, Worst Supporting Actor, Worst Support... Or, yeah, Worst Supporting Actor for Steve Forrest, um, who I think played Lawyer Greg. Yes. Um, and... Uh, Joe, please heavily edit this section so that there's not a, dead, a lot of dead air of you guys Googling. 
Oh yeah, no, uh, but, uh, yeah. Trust me, there's the, okay. the whole thing going into the not, deleted scenes folder. That's not fun listening. Believe it or not, huh? I'm cool. Not, I'm not used to seeing you with glasses. <laughs> <laughs> they work for you. Thank you. Um. Uh, otherwise, I have to do that. Uh, I imagine it is a big relief to not have to just like lean forward and squint every every so often. Yeah, it's also like when I'm doing editing, like drawing, I don't get a throbbing headache. Yes. Uh, while I'm grabbing some city water, um, I'm going to allow you the time to debate whether or not cats could have been fixed with polyamory and cell phones. Oh, for God's sake. Hmm. <laughs> They, they, they don't have thumbs. No, you know what? Cats don't have thumbs. You know what would have fixed cats? Trap new to release. Trap new to release. Contribute to your local community cat program, everyone. How am I doing? Have I embarrassed you? No, in front you're of the doing whole fucking internet? fantastic. <laughs> no, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in Stay in your lane. <laughs> I'm here to take your job, Jack. Did you see- Great, because oh I got other shit I could do. <laughs> you just reminded me of something amazing. Um, uh, the other day, Alanis Morissette tweeted um, a... Uh, <laughs> she, tweet- she tweeted a, uh, a, a, a pun a take of one of her lines from one of her songs. Yeah. And Weird Al Yankovic retweeted <laughs> yeah, saying, yeah. Stay in your lane! <laughs> Stop it. Uh, sometimes celebrities are all right. If they're Weird Al Yankovic, yes. Belinda's I mean, um, friend, Chrissy, is not a musical person, never been in a band, never sung, but does not want to die without being a part of a Weird Al cover band. Hell yeah. Uh, so she will be performing the Weird Al portions of various songs in the fall with the band. That's amazing. <laughs> it's It reminds me of... who's Who's the voice actor who did a jazz album but can't play piano oh it's, it's h john benjamin <laughs> <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> oh my god i'm so glad i think he released a second one why because are you familiar with him. this yes uh is this is this weird Al cover band looking for stage time because i have a <laughs> i have are a musical a improv team that uh needs openers <laughs> i'll let christina know that she she already has uh, touring options. <laughs> they're they're in Ohio, I think near Salem. I don't know the mm. fucking places in Ohio. <sighs> I grew up there. Neither do I. There aren't any places in Ohio. It's, it's all wasteland. just Ohio. You drive in there, and several days later, you drive back out, having no memory of what transpired <laughs> in between. I can confirm. I wrote a short story that had had to take place in a Rust Belt, and or a. Uh, yeah, Rust Belt. So I was like, I guess Ohio's close enough. How is how is Pen- how is Western Pennsylvania not considered part of the Rust Belt? I don't know. It is. That's what I fucking thought. Not according to Google. Well, Google's a liar. That's true. Rust Go- Belt is Google- more cultural than geographical, which is the problem. Uh, Google says wrong. Appalachia. Uh, but That's okay. I- Apparently, Appalachia is financial because my uh, my hometown <laughs> got added to it because we were so poor we needed money to fix the sewers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. We do not have mountains near us. No, to all of our international can't, can't listeners, we're, we're doing fine. We're doing just, just fine. Um, oh, boy. And on that note. And on that note. Let's, let's talk about narcissistic abuse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to relive the 2016 election. <laughs> oh, no. Was there any CGI in the movie? No. Then what? why is the... Because you copy and pasted a format Shh. from another script. We're going to jump no. back into this and you're going to start talking about Howard the Duck again. <laughs> <laughs> the duck boobs were too far, Tommy dearest. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I have nothing to read. It's blank. <laughs> Oh, oh no. no, is this because you went back to a previous version of the script? Or did you go back to the current version? Uh, it's the current version. Oh, okay. I just felt that I didn't need to write anything for the critique part. Because cool. uh, I have memories. Uh, the fix, I did write some stuff down. Good. What what was the song 
uh, that you started to sing that is by pop punk band uh, Where Are You and I Hate You Now? Because it's stuck in my head, but just that oh, line. It was bl- uh, oh, Blink-182? Yeah. Yeah, it was I Missed You. Whatever. Fucking yeah. hate it. I'm fucking... Fuck, fuck you. We're done. <laughs> I'm canceling the show right now. <laughs> uh, I Look, if you give me and or Vince an opportunity to make that reference, we will. <laughs> I hate pop punk so goddamn much. <laughs> uh, it, it was the music of the times when I was growing up, and that's why I didn't learn to like music until I was in like the senior year of high school. I mean... Okay, I get it, but also, <laughs> but also, I love it, and I'm terrible. All right, well, as long as we are agreed on that. Um, so I was thinking about Ghostbusters a lot today, and I was thinking about how in the second one, they're like digging a hole in the street. Yes, and they get stopped by I think like the power company dude or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, the phone lines are over there. Right, right, uh, and. They're they're doing their shtick, and then they turn to Egon to like get his his input, and he's like, "Yo," <laughs> and I was thinking about that a lot today because in Egon's mind, I'm reading into this too much, but like in Egon's mind, he was like, "Oh, I have to be the overly masculine, uh, kind of stock character in this moment. What would an overly masculine like construction worker say?" And the only thing that came to mind was, "Yo." <laughs> <laughs> and then it's so relatable. It it is. It's, Harold Ramis was a goddamn genius. <laughs> the number of times at work, I'll have somebody like, "Hey, uh, see that game?" And I'm like, "Yo, yo!" <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he knows what's up. <laughs> uh, this guy, this guy yeah. knows. Uh, but that, I think that's why I love the first two Ghostbuster movies because they have a bunch of little moments like that uh, <laughs> sprinkled throughout where you really get to, to know those They're characters. So very good. I still haven't seen Afterlife, but it's whatever. Yeah, it's, it's a fun. movie. I'll I'll, t- I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, I I didn't hate watching it, but I'm also never gonna watch it again. Yeah, fair. And it made me sad. Oh, so you know. Well. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we're not covering any of those things. No, I just needed to get that off my chest. That's okay. Is, are there are there any other last minute ideas you need to get off your chest before we uh, before we we start here in earnest? So Brian Bukaki <laughs> is he only doing Marvel spoofs? Hmm. No, Dark Horse. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, I realized that we didn't get the top of this <laughs> in the, the feed, but uh, another work thought I had was that uh, in the Knife Picker universe, um, which we've developed way beyond any a, a rational point, short film, <laughs> and way beyond any point that makes any goddamn no. sense. Um, God, there's so much lore to the six minute film, uh, <laughs> but the like premier pornographer in Knifebreaker's universe is Brian Bukaki, who yes. is uh, basically the Stan Lee of this universe. Looks like him, talks like him. Um, by the time Knifebreaker saw any of his films, he he was directing. I think before that, he was on like old stag films. Like you could find it. There's still like some <laughs> clips online of Brian Bukaki in his heyday. How, how much uh, What We Do in the Shadows have you seen? Uh, first couple seasons. Okay, so did you did you see the episode where Laszlo is very proud of his old pornography that he made? No, but like that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> there's an episode where Laszlo is very proud of all of his old pornography that he made, and it's all very boring and stupid. But he's very proud God of it. Damn it! So uh, he made a lot of it. Emily Gray, who we worked with, oh on yeah, Africa, yeah, she, yeah. Uh, when that first came out, she was like, "This is even better than the movie." And I love the movie. I'm the like, movie's no, 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 so no, no. fucking good. But um, honestly, and it, I, it might be. <laughs> t- today, again, another work thought. I was like, three years later, I'm like, she's right. She's right. <laughs> God <laughs> damn, damn it. you, Gray. <laughs> uh, those are all the work thoughts I had. Okay. I now uh, turn my podcasting host hat over to you. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Hold for cat. <laughs> holding for cat. For those of you on Instagram. God damn it, Bushy. Bushy has just jumped up on the table. So she really likes that crumpled up paper towel. Oh, yeah. Um, She's been using it like a blankie. No. Yeah, I, kinda... You want to be there? I, I know you're a cat. I can't stop you from doing what you're going to do. So there you, you are. You get your tail hair out of my city water. There you go. You settled in? We're all in? We're all in. We're all good here. 
All right, let's let's continue. Okay, so so you're old. So I'm old. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, thought I was gonna. I literally thought I was gonna burp for a second there, and just it, like did not come. Um, awkward Magneto. Awkward Magneto <laughs> strikes again. Uh, Jack, what do you know about the six million dollar man? I don't know who you are, who I am, so I can't answer that question. I'm made. Get the extraction team in here. (laughs) Well, stranger, let me tell you a thing or two about the $6 million man. (laughs) So, Uh, do you want me to introduce us? Oh, fuck. God damn it. (laughs) I'm going to get this right eventually. It takes a minute. All right. So, there's there's also a comic book. I forget who the publisher is, but um, Alex Ross, the artist, uh, did a couple covers. Um, Alex Ross, Alex Ross, uh, Kingdom Come. Oh, Marvel's, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, like yeah, no, he's a big deal of an artist. Yeah, uh, photorealistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Type stuff. He's a big fan of that era. That makes um, a lot of sense. Like, I think he's done a bunch of like Green Hornet covers, that kind of thing. Um, the the thing that we don't really see that you kind of miss if you you you're just looking at the um the premise. It, it's kind of f- funky, like funk. Sorry, we have a, a few com- a few comments from Mo here. Right. Uh, as we were talking about, uh, as we were talking about uh, the six million dollar man needing to pay back his uh, his debt. <laughs> yeah. uh, see, uh, God bless capitalism. Right. Uh, pay back six million dollars for health care. <laughs> Uh, and then he was point. He was also agreeing with us there. Uh, Adult Swim and whatnot was owned by uh, Ted Turner and Warner oh, okay. Brothers. Okay. Um, and he's only he has only picked up on Bionic Woman, and then he was also commenting that Alex Ross did some Spider Man. Yes, yes, he did. Um, who is his least favorite character to paint? Really, the lines. Oh yeah, that would get tedious. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, in in the made for TV movie, Steve isn't even awake to isn't even conscious to like make the decision about. Yeah, it's just done to him. It's just right? done to him. That's I feel like that is a running occurrence in all of these versions of it. Okay. Like I, I in like there's not a single one of um of the film adaptations that have been attempted mm-hmm. where they try to rewrite the story to him choosing this. Like it's just okay. thrust upon him because I, I feel like that's like the entire thrust of like, Oh no, you have to keep, do you have to do these things for us to repay yeah. this? Like doesn't work if he, if he had that choice. Yeah. Or I, it would work a lot differently. Right. And even when they're like, you have to be able to repay us. He still is like, nah, fuck you. Yeah. And won't, he doesn't agree to do it do the first mission until he is told like this guy was kidnapped and is going to die if you don't help. Um, and it's a little dark. I don't know. They don't like spend a whole lot of time on it, but when he goes to rescue this dude, the dude's already dead. He was killed like a week or so ago. Oh shit. And the whole mission was set up to test Steve, Steve's, um, bionics. Oh yeah. Wow. Like the pie was actually, Pretty good. The made for TV movie slash pilot was pretty good. I yeah. Um, and I I kind of want to watch more of the first season because when I when you jump to the Bigfoot episode, that's like four seasons in. Sure. So I'm sure that like that subplot's already been dealt with, and he's pretty comfortable working with OSI. Yeah, at that point, um, be, uh, unless unless he's got like a long con to try and get out right, of everything right. that's like like simmering under the surface. But I, at that point in time, I highly doubt that they're working that kind of subversive yeah. plot. Uh, like I wish, I kind of wish that there was a remake TV series because I would. I think the premise of having a a man who the government screwed over for healthcare reasons and then uses him. Uh, is relevant uh would play with co- current audiences um yeah <laughs> yeah sure would uh, what's what's like the boston beer what do samuel adams sam adams yeah that's one of them i'm sure i'm sure i just pissed off somebody right. from boston listen we have <laughs> iron city in we got iron city it's, down here we 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 can't we can't judge it's a n- bunch of yinzer fucks 
Anyway. Uh, Mo would not mind comedians being given an opportunity to play a, a, a serious role, but it places a lot on the director and actor to find the right comedic balance. Uh, that's his case for uh, Chris Rock or Jim Carrey playing Steve Austin. I think either of them could do it. I think it'd be fun. Hi, Antonio. The I think it's less to do with their acting ability and more to do with their build. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Carrie in particular, he's such a tall, lanky motherfucker. Yeah. Like, they're going to have... Uh, imagine the tracksuit budget for that guy. Because you said... Because <laughs> you mentioned his appearance in um, What's It's Fuck 2. Kick, kick ass too, and kick ass too, and they yeah. gave him like a big body prosthetic, right? I'm pretty sure he was in like a muscle suit of some sort. Um, yeah, he either that or he like weirdly beefed up for that one. <laughs> so i I think he has the chops. I absolutely has the chops to do yeah. it. Um, I too bad we'll never see it happening because right. Sonic Two was his last movie. <laughs> Later, hater. <laughs> 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 I want to become this is this is my new career. I'm quitting my job today right now. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh and I'm becoming a uh senior actor uh legacy um so where am I going with this senior actor like legacy, legacy manager? Manager. That's the word I want. So that <laughs> when an actor's about to retire, I tell them yes or no. Yes. And if you tell them no, you then show them the last scene that they did. Right. Uh, <laughs> you were not going Sh- out like that. Sean Connery, leave extraordinary gentlemen. Oh no, no. no. <laughs> Jim Carrey, obviously Zardos too. <laughs> Zardos too. <laughs> More puke guns. <laughs> we need to get back into that red skimpy swimsuit one oh, more time. No. <laughs> Christ. I was like, how do we fix his <laughs> flabby old band body? And then I was like, oh, put him in the big red condom. <laughs> Just kind of like, more like a grocery bag for his oh, no. entire body. Um, Sean Connery, very late in life, finding that he has a latex fetish. <laughs> uh, no no hate for Kink. But no, no hate for Kink. Just um, Sean Connery Sean jokes. Connery <laughs> jokes. Uh, I actually don't think that. Jim Carrey's last line is the worst for who he is. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I think he probably could have done better, but he absolutely could have done League of Extraordinary Gentlemen too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. We we need to do a, a second unit on League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. No, on Sonic the Hedgehog. Absolutely not. Well, maybe Sonic, but not League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Okay. Um. The, Be, because of all the racism? I was going to say because I'd have to read the book and it's all rapey. It, it, I mean, it is it is that, yes. I, uh, I, I've read one of the trade paperbacks. God damn it, Alan Moore. Yeah. Like, I want to read more of your stuff, but you got a couple it's things so, you really lean on. It's real fucking gross. Like, he, his um, his Lovecraftian stories have come back into publishing, uh, pub, but I, I know that they're bad. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, fish on human relations. <laughs> which is the summary for <laughs> I'm pretty the shadow sure, out of In's mouth. I'm pretty sure that was the elevator pitch that he made. <laughs> that was the that basically explains the Lovecraft a real journal story. Shadow out of In's mouth. Yeah. Fish human relations. Fish human relations. Yeah. New podcast idea. The last role we cast actors we love before we throw them to the lions. Saving them from themselves. I was going to say volcano. I honestly, as I was reading it, I was expecting the word volcano, mm-hmm. but no, no, throwing them directly to the lions. Who, who, who is making that pitch? Oh, uh, uh, it's uh, Antonio. I'm not against it. I'm also not against it. I think that'd be uh, fun. <laughs> but I do want to go through, look at actors who've retired in their last film. Yeah. Uh, and just kind of say, you did good. Or what the fuck? <laughs> Maybe just one more. <laughs> um, God. Come on, even if the payday was right? Come on, man. I think there's a cracked article that pretty much does exactly what Honestly, we want to do. Honestly, I feel like you literally just... Like, like, the idea that you just pitched is a... <laughs> it has to be a cracked mm-hmm. article. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> 
I really want a, a pasta trough. <laughs> I really want this pasta trough to happen. <laughs> I'm officially a guest. From this point on, I'm a guest. Oh. <laughs> well. Uh, friend, I'll drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Well, I'm okay. just here for the fing- like to provide finger guns at this point. <laughs> it's great for the podcasting meeting. <laughs> yeah, audio <laughs> audio finger guns. Can you use little pew pews? So I pew pew pew. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Pew pew. Yeah, I guess I'll pick up on that for sure. <laughs> what else could it be? Jack will be talking about something troubling, and you'll just go pew pew. Yeah, I am gonna pepper in some pew pews. Pepper some pews. You did this to yourselves. Mm-hmm. Just, you, know. you did this to yourself. Technically, we all did this to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Well, we're not trapped in here with you. No, I chose. I fully chose to be here. I've been here my whole life. <laughs> I've always been in this room. Welcome to my hell, says Emily. <laughs> oh god. Wait, if guests get this kind of power, can we can we stream to? Uh, fuck, I don't know You're any streaming services. You're the host. I, I me personally. I Did thought you? Joe. Would... Oh no no no! We're guests. Joe's a guest host? too. No, well, I didn't know I was a guest. I got demoted too. Fuck. Wow, well, you're sound guy. Uh oh. <laughs> Can I at least be best boy? Yeah, you can okay. be best boy. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <Your> dinosaur wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You can be the butler. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that entails for a podcast. That's a but... good question. What would a podcast butler be? Well, are you like a Batman butler or are you a regular butler? I was uh, thinking not, a Batman I'm, butler. I'm not good enough to be a Pennyworth mm. origin of Batman's butler. I think you just hold a toilet paper for three months. <laughs> Tear it off for me. I saw that. The origin. <laughs> what a he... stupid renaming. Well, just... no one got, they were, I guess nobody got it. No one knows who Pennyworth is. What? So they were like, guys, by the way. This is in the Batman. I know. We're I promise th- it's Batman. I know we're three seasons into this fucking show, but Pennyworth, we swear it's Batman. Yeah. Are we, nice. are we rolling? Yeah, we've been rolling. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we just got a lot of deleted oh, no, this scene is material. Good stuff. I, I hope we're rolling. I, I mean, either Joe's gonna be the host, or it'll just be like this for two. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you say a fucking word. <laughs> I think we have an Instagram comment. We do. We do. I missed some discussion, but. Uh, movie comics, movies as comics used to want the John Connor hair when they were a child. Neat. And I don't disagree. <laughs> Maybe that's what you responded to was the haircut. That's why you connected to It was Denny's Danny. haircut. That's it. Yeah, I was I, I got this kid. Um, <laughs> also, one of his outfits is exactly John Connor's outfit. Really? It's like absolutely the outfit he wears when Arnold picks him up and puts him on the bike. Huh. Um, so somebody needs to deep fake Denny's head yeah, on oh John God. Connor's head oh for that scene. God. Oh, man, and talking to Arnold. Yes. That... Ooh, I want someone to create this picture. And as they ride off into uh, out of frame, you just hear a... <laughs> <laughs> so unnerving. <laughs> yeah, where does Tommy's laugh fit in Rosebud or Thorn for you? Um, it depends on if I'm thinking of it like it's a movie or if it's an experience. Uh, experience. If oh, it's an experience, then it's mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if it's me trying to understand this as traditional cinema, Mm-mm. I fucking hate it. <laughs> and yeah, I... I'm uncomfortable. And I am yes. confused by the sound editor because a lot of that could have been taken out, but I feel like it was well... put in. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, Antonio says you know far too much about this film. <laughs> uh, yeah, read the book. No shit, Antonio. <laughs> Just read the Disaster Artist. I mean, honestly, I yeah, know, yeah. Uh, it's really good. It's a, so it's quality. The yeah. book is very good. Um, it's actually co-written between Greg Sestero and Tom Bissell, who I actually already knew about because he wrote a really good like video game book called hmm. One Up. I feel like I've that one. Yeah, it's, it's a good read. Uh and uh it's and, and the audiobook is actually read by Greg Sestero. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh and then the movie uh despite James Franco right is real good. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. just very fun. I just watching the 
trailers for the disaster hours. I'm like, I don't want to watch this, but I don't want to watch the room. Well, <laughs> now, now we I can. The that yeah. So, yeah. Hey, um, can you drive us home tonight? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, all right, we'll cool. <laughs> yeah, it should be fine. <sighs> Play that for the cops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. No worries. For anyone listening publicly, uh, we will get uh, an Uber <laughs> if circumstances call for it. They you have are to tell us if you're a couch. cop. <laughs> it is entrapment. <laughs> you gotta tell me if you're a cop. If, if you're, you're listening, listening to, to the, the show, <laughs> if and it, you're a cop, you do have to tell. You us. have to let us know if you're a fan. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it is so. I, ironically, it is really important to me that no one drive drunk ever. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Um, I've been in the car with people who've been like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm great. And then oh, I'm yeah. like, you are not okay, and I might die tonight. Oh, yeah. So if I had not asked you guys to do The Room, mm -hmm. um, what other movie would you have preferred us to cover? I mean, I love The Room. Um... Yeah, I feel like I picked a good crew for, for this movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, I mean, uh, are we talking specifically Razzie listeners? No, whichever. Whichever. Mm -hmm. Some B team shit. Mm -hmm. B team? Uh, you know, non Razzie, whatever. So. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have Birdemic, too. Oh, wow. That <sighs> one's different. I, yeah, I feel like that one's just not as good a bad movie as. I there. agree. It's like, it's more frustrating <laughs> <laughs> than like fun. What's it Birdemic. Two oh. shock and terror. Shock and terror. There is not a birdemic one. Um, is is it birdemic two? Mm -hmm. Is it meant to be funny or is it no? No, okay. it's another one. Okay. Like a man earnestly made it. Oh, birdemic shock and terror is a movie. Birdemic two, the resurrection oh. is a separate movie which I have not seen. Then why am okay. I? I'm like mixing all sorts of things up. Maybe you're thinking of trolls too. I'm probably thinking of trolls too. But yeah, birdemic was another one but yeah i don't know if that'll be as fun i would like to do some movies that are actually good but missed being perfect by like just a hair i mean i'm here for that um i would have to like look through my like watch list app thing and find those movies for you Jeff, that bathroom's a hate crime against tall people <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sure shit is <laughs> Uh, my favorite part about that bathroom is that today when I like got home from my interview and I was like, I really got a shit, but Ethan was still cleaning around. And yeah. I was just like, I can hold it. It's fine. I'll take a nap. No. No. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, hey, well, no, you ask Ethan if I can poop. <laughs> and she did. And he's like, yeah, go ahead. Just don't wiggle on the toilet. And I was like, well, I guess I can't. <laughs> uh, went in and you may have noticed that spot directly to the right, closest to the wall that is like... um caulking not caulking um like putty no well let's just say it wasn't dry and there was a jack sized footprint kind of like if you were like a child and you're, and you're like oh it's cute like put little footprints and like <clears throat> like on the sidewalk except uh -huh. for it was my toilet <laughs> <laughs> Maybe i don't want that there <laughs> no i was like maybe it'll give me something better grip like because it's like <laughs> <laughs> my foot shaped yeah you know, you and you alone <laughs> just, yeah. just me and i was like oh i could go get bushy could we do a little one beside mine <laughs> well that's actually really cute i didn't do that either. now i'm now i'm just ups upset with you mm -hmm. i'll break it's it again don't worry <laughs> <laughs> shit how do we do the reverse version of what we normally do we're not we're gonna do what we normally do <laughs> oh or i kind of fuck off and make it awkward Bye everybody. No, God, no. We were skipping like eight things. Oh, no, right. right no. <laughs> oh, very th tired and it's hot. In here. I understand. My ice pack doesn't work anymore. No. <laughs> I'm trying to like not vomit constant comic book nerd at you. <laughs> no, you, a little bit. you, you actually like you. You let it rip at literally the moment that I had written in here. Give Jack some time to talk about comic book stuff. <laughs> Perfect. Like you nailed. Like you actually intuited when it was going to be time for oh you to God. do that really well. So, what do you think about John Peters? 
Uh, he is uh, exactly the kind of person I expected him to be. We're still only scratching the surface with him. I believe it. There's so much more that's going to come in the second episode, I swear to God. <sighs> so gross. Um, <laughs> Jesus. You know, I, I don't... I want to look into when Sony kind of became a filmmaking company. That's a good question. I'm not really familiar with them as producers until, like, honestly, like 2000s. I know that they were around before then, yeah. but that is a really good question. That is definitely going to be something worth looking into. And, like, even now they're not one of the big-name companies because they... I mean, aside they, from Spider-Man. Aside, that's their one one thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's because they're run by idiots. I mean, they're not the only ones these days. <laughs> right, right, right. They're just the only ones that had their emails leaked. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was that. There was that. It's like, wow, you guys are exactly the children we thought you were. More or less, honestly. I mean, fire hose, the chimpanzees of the firefighting world. <laughs> That's what I've always said. What did I just, what the fuck did I, I don't just know, say? Just keep going. <laughs> Do you remember when they hired the writer of Toy Story 3 to, to write the new Star Wars film? And then he died, I think. He, Wait, what? <laughs> he didn't actually die. I think they they just took him in back and beat him with sticks. Wait, which 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 writer? Was, I can't remember his name. But I remember they originally had hired the writer of Toy Story 3 to write Star Wars Rise of the sequels. Um, the one that Abrams did, the first Abrams one. Oh, God. I... My brain is so full of Superman Lives that the like, spring <laughs> right. of Star Wars right. just completely derailed my train I, of thought. <laughs> I truly, truly just like the um, sequels. But, uh, yeah, he didn't end up doing the final um, script because there's too much pressure. Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3. Michael Arndt? I think so. Oh, yeah, he wrote The Force Awakens. You're right. Wait. So was he supposed to come back with Abrams to do the... Uh, no, no, that, I, I misspoke. He was supposed to write the first script, and his name is probably on the final draft. He didn't complete the script. Oh, the, okay, so the pressure of rebooting the franchise right. was too much for him. Well, that's, a, that's a bummer. And that's when... Because he wanted to do original shit. And J.J. And, Abrams is not capable... Well... <laughs> it's Abrams, neither here or here. Well. Abrams wanted to recreate the emotion of the first film. Even if that meant just redoing the first redoing film. Redoing the first film. Um, I'll be honest. I'm not mad that he did that. He did it that way because they needed to recapture the magic of Star Wars to be able to do anything anyone was going to pay attention to. Because Lucas had lost it. I like the first forty minutes of the first one. I like the ideas of the second one, and the third fucking, one I don't remember. I, I fucking love the second one. I, I will. There's, there's the kind of like side quest that I. Really just like yeah, the 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 Cantabite side quest could sure. have, should the, the should have been, side quest was rough. <laughs> Bold steps. Yeah, I, uh, I, Ryan I just Johnson. don't think Finn w Finn's conversation with Pinhead was just not well conceived. <laughs> the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh God. That's fine. He did knives out after that, and he's doing some more knives out. I can't, I'm, I can't I'm okay wait with all for this glass stuff. onion. It's uh, December, right? I think so, yeah. Sweet. The okay. Cenobites, this October. Oh my god. <laughs> I also can't wait. Yeah. Uh, anyway, back to what we were actually fucking Fine. talking about. Anyway, let's end this episode. Sure. So that yeah. I can go pee. Yeah, we'll take we'll take a pee break. We'll take a little breather. Uh maybe read that thing that you sent me earlier. Uh and uh yeah. <laughs>